it's me, Sean Capri. I'm in my car, and you're listening to the most horse powerful podcast on the internet. It's the Xbox Drive. I'm on a Skype call with my friend Ryan Turpin. He's the man on the moose. And on our journey today, I just pointed right into the camera so the YouTube people will get a nice surprise. And that made me giggle. And we got a lot of news and a lot of questions. So jump on into the Xbox Drive. Bah! Greater than X. Hello, Sean Capri. I kind of ran out of breath a little bit, Ryan. I surprised myself with that little like camera point as I'm driving <laughs> along here. Just, uh, just surprised myself along the way. How are you, my friend? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I'm trying not to like you know just break <laughs> under whatever you were doing over you. there. The best part I is I can't even you. see you, so I don't even know what's going on over there. But future <laughs> Ryan will know. Future Ryan will know yeah. if there's you know something going on that that I should be concerned about or not. Oh you know, man, there is a, there is a certain something something that happens when I just because like I don't need to be driving right now. Right. Like this is this is the thing. It's a bit that started like when when Dave Moore and I started the show. It was um, we were discovered trying to figure out how do we do another podcast something together but like how are we gonna have time for it and we figured it's the, on the drive to work like that totally makes sense and let's just do this with the skype call and blah 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 mm. and now i work from home and you work from home nobody's driving anywhere i'm going to get drinks this is basically it so i guess maybe people will enjoy like the spontaneity that maybe comes with this but hopefully and hopefully that's enough to keep people around you know what i mean hopefully anyways we'll hopefully see anyways. yeah or it's the exact thing that drives them away <laughs> So nice I see what you did there, there with the, you know, the yep. pun there. But yeah, the dry pun. We mm-hmm. got to clean the garage a little bit, Sean, or else the show sure. will never get moving. So if you want to support the show, there's a <laughs> number of ways to do that. Number one, you can support, you can subscribe to us on your podcast feed of choice, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, or all the places you find podcasts so you can check us out there. Also, if you want to see our beautiful faces every single week, we put up a video version of the show every Thursday morning on YouTube, youtube.com slash Yumi Capri is how you check that out there. Of course, like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff that YouTubers tell you to do. Click that bell, hit the dingle dangle, you know, oh, that, that wow. helps as well. Gentle, gentle and with then, the dingle dangle. Last but not least, if you want early access to this and all of our shows, head over to Patreon, patreon.com slash Yumi Capri is how you do that. Throw a little tip in the old tip jar and out comes content, including a new episode of the Yumi Capri podcast, which we actually recorded uh, a couple days ago. So you can go check that out there as well. All right. Without further ado, let's grab our eight tracks, pop them in. It's time for a very abbreviated playlist because Sean, besides Halo multiplayer, did we really play anything this week besides Halo multiplayer? Not that we no. Hmm. No, how much to say about that? We played, well, did you play the same game that Kato and I played on the Nintendo Drive? Did you play the eShop sale game at all, Ryan Turfer? <laughs> no, not really. And in fact, uh, I'm going to actually scroll all the way to the bottom because we actually got questions about this, Sean. Let's because do it. we got Mike at Blaze Knight 0923 who asks, yeah, man. what quote unquote late November deals did you guys snag this year? <laughs> and then Seamus McIsaac at Famous Seamus also asked, so what is in your Black Friday haul? So we talked about this actually a lot, more than I thought we would on the Yumi Capri podcast, which again, page exclusive to Patreon, go check it out there. But uh, for me on Black Friday, a lot of times what usually ends up happening is I already have almost all the games I already want anyways by the time Black Friday rolls around. So getting them on sale isn't really a big deal for me. So I usually don't buy Games on Black Friday. Um, I did buy two. I did buy Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania, and I bought Cruise and Blast. <laughs> That's it. Those are the only two games I picked up. I, I spent a total of fifty dollars on games mm-hmm. during Black Friday, Sean, and that that was enough for me personally. So, what about you? Because I know your list is very, very, very long. <laughs> you don't need to go well, through all them. Well, Ninten- on the Nintendo side, it is and was. Man, people should... I had a riot with Kato yesterday on the Nintendo Drive. And if people don't already subscribe there, please go check that that show out. My God, we had so much fun. <laughs> I think between the two of us, I think we had like 20 some odd games that we had bought yep. over over Black Friday. And had a ton of fun. And then I partway through the conversation, I'm like, hang on a second. I also bought Xbox games <laughs> as well. Yep. So it kind of went a little nuts. But Xbox was a little bit more controlled, I would say, because... Um, because we have Game Pass, really. Mm. So one game that was on Game Pass that got removed and is always on sale over the holidays um, is um, Air- Ace Combat 7. I almost call it Air Combat 7. Ace Combat mm-hmm. 7. I think this game is super duper fun. I got it for 20 bucks, and I think it comes with, a, oh, it comes with some DLC. It's like an extra plane. 
I think it does. Uh, so that mm-hmm. one I'm I'm pretty happy with because yeah, used to be in Game Pass, not there anymore. I love like flying and it's it's much more arcadey Ryan than I expected mm-hmm. it to be. When you look at it, it looks very flight simulator kind of thing. Yeah, well, yeah, like it's a, not. the Ace Combat games have always kind of been like that, where they're like less arcadey than something like Afterburner, but more mm-hmm. are more arcadey than something like Flight Simulator. Like it rides like a nice medium between the two of those. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And there's actually only one other game on Xbox that I bought. And that was, um, that was Lego Star Wars, the force awakens for $7 and right. 49 cents. Nice. Even really though you've got, you got that Skywalker saga coming out next year with all Don't nine care. movies in it. Don't, Don't care. Don't. Well, oh, this was, how can I ignore it? And also for whatever reason, cause I got a Lego game over on, on Nintendo as well. I'm like, I don't know why I just want Lego games. Like I was, I was kind of in the mood. So yeah. we'll see too. Cause we also have end of year sales coming too, Ryan. So That's I thought true. I would like kind of halt myself at this stage. And just yeah, I was going to say like PlayStation just started theirs this week. So I'd imagine like the Xbox one, we maybe get like next week or the week after. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think that, that, that's pretty good. Also, I mean, you, picked I also, up, uh, you also picked up Guardians as well, right? Yeah. And I talked about that last week, I think too. I was just going to say, because yeah. um, I picked it up and then I'm going to send it back because I, I won it from Dapper Tux. So shout out again to Dapper Tux for the free copy of Guardians. So. That's Tons true. of stuff. I got too many games, man. I don't know when the heck I'm going to get to all this stuff. Hashtag but it's fun to buy. too many games. Well, yes. anyway, so all, all we really played this week is Halo for the most part. And Halo multiplayer, super fun, of course, as always. We had so many people there on Halo Saturdays. We had like more than a full lobby, which was pretty Maxed incredible to see. Maxed out lobby. Nice. Yeah. Plus spectators. We were up to like, again, like 30 people on, on Saturday. So if you want to so check that out known. as well. Of Let course. it be known, Ryan. Saturdays, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Twitch.tv slash Sean Capri. YouTube.com slash Yumi Capri. Get there fast, man. That lobby is going to be filling up pretty quick. But we yeah. should also say no Halo Saturdays on the 18th. I'm gonna, unless you want to. I mean, you're you're more than welcome to, to do. I am going to be indisposed on the 18th. For I'm only Christmas there for stuff. like the last like 45 minutes of every Halo Saturday anyway. So it would be tough for me to kind of put that together for everyone. So that's true. And, maybe and if you know what? In the community oh, wants to do it. That's cool. oh, I was just going to say that, but they're going to take it from us, Ryan. Those suckers are going to they're going to take our idea and take everybody with them. But actually, for real, people should play. Uh, yeah. And then the next Saturday is actually Christmas Day. So probs not, I would say. Yeah. Probably not. I mean, unless we're all bored, we want to play video games. Who knows? It's true. It's true. We might be all hyped up from Halo because it comes out on the 8th, my friend. That's true. It's around the quarter. By the next time we we talk next week, Sean, it'll be out. Oh, my gosh. I know. It's happening. Is that the biggest thing? That's the last big release? Like, there's Final Fantasy XIV I know you're excited about. Yeah. It's really those two this month because we've also got the gunk also coming out this month, too. Oh, good, good, good one. Yeah, but that's it. Like those are the rest of the, the last kind of like three games for the rest of the year at this point. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. besides some smaller games, because there's actually some indie games coming out, which we'll talk about actually in the, in the news as well. But and Game Pass than, games. That's true. Well, speaking of that, let's slam the brakes on this conversation. It's time for some breaking news. And as you alluded to, Sean, there's a lot of news in the X- world of Xbox this week, which I, which is interesting. So mm-hmm. especially because you really don't expect that the week of Thanksgiving, essentially, but. Here we are. So let's start with a tweet from Jason Ronald. Now, this actually goes back to a story we talked about a few weeks ago when when they announced the new slate of backwards compatible games because they had talked about. Oh, hi there. Can I please get two large Diet Cokes? Anything else? That is all. Thank you. Why didn't I get a coffee? Oh, I should have got a coffee. I haven't had a coffee yet today, Ryan. You, tr- you went and made the same order as yesterday on the Nintendo drive, uh, but assuming you had already had a coffee like yesterday. These these days are blurring together, man. Like I am, um, I don't even know. The days are passing by like minutes and hours and it's very, very strange. I feel like I, I'm in Fight Club without I the fighting. I can't believe it's December already. Let's just, let's just say that. Uh, Anyways, going back to what I was talking about. So this first news story <laughs> kind of is like a segue, like a continuation of what we talked about with the backward and compatible games because um, one of the things we learned when they announced the new slate of backwards compatible titles is that they were going to be discontinuing the 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 ability to bring more backwards compatible games due to licensing issues. Right. Uh, we had also gotten on the same day a whole bunch, a whole slate of new FPS boosted games as well w- across mm-hmm. Xbox One and Xbox 360. So we thought maybe more were coming because we got some there. But Jason Ronald actually took to Twitter and actually confirmed that support for FPS boosts will also not continue as well. Quote, we knew that our current FPS boost techniques would only work on selected titles. This is similar to resolution enhancements for Xbox One X. We have enabled FPS boost on 130 plus titles, but we have tried many, many more outside of this. 
with unsuccessful results. Enhancing games from the past is difficult as we don't mean any actual changes to the game's source code. If we are able to develop new methods to further enhance backwards compatible titles, we will pursue them, but yes, we don't have anything to announce in the immediate horizon. So it sounds like really... Thank you, it, you too. From what we were kind of hearing from, from people at Microsoft, it sounds like they tried this with like 200 plus games and the 130 that we got were all the ones that worked. And the rest of them either, maybe there was like a game breaking bug or something happened um, that was kind of unexpected with the way the game played to kind of make it so yeah. that it really wouldn't play uh, be playable. So that's why they didn't release it. So what do you think about this news story? The fact that like- Hi there, thank it, you. Because I think SPS boost was something we were really liking for a while. I was This is something I know I was hoping would continue, but what, what do you think about it being kind of terminated like this, Sean? Yeah, it's one of those God <laughs> Xbox giveth and Xbox can take it away. I really thought this was going to be part of an ongoing kind of legacy with Xbox, but I do appreciate that they're being like really upfront and clear about it, like that <laughs> this is what is happening and this is why it's happening. It's but yeah, it's, and I think it also highlights something that maybe it wasn't like really clear to me of just like how much hands-on with each individual title is required to make this happen because <laughs> it just seems like there's you know you set a bunch of code and then you pay, copy and paste that code into game and that game runs faster like i don't i, I always felt like it was they made it seem so easy and mm -hmm. this gives a sense of just how much hard work goes into each individual game um so yeah I, i'm curious to know they, they have a little dangle at the end there to say if we find something new, we'll get back to you. But for now, like the current techniques just aren't going to get any further on any of the other things. And the other thing I think I'll touch on here, Ryan, is that it sort of speaks to maybe an era of Xbox that maybe they don't have to speak to or address any longer, which is maybe the Series X and Series S can stand on their own now. Forza is a bona fide hit. Halo hopefully will be uh, uh, like already, I think even just with the, the multiplayer beta, uh, mm -hmm. people are really enjoying that. Lots of people playing on there. The The backwards compatibility move was such a like player centric thing and trying to address the Xbox has no games thing. I think they're beyond that now. Like I think that that has served its purpose. The back compat, the FPS boost, like those things played their role. And mm -hmm. maybe that's another reason why they just don't need to invest in it as much. They have distanced themselves from PlayStation, who shows no sign of doing anything even remotely like this. Mm -hmm. And maybe the return on investment is drying up. Is kind of my my overall take on it. Yeah, it it, it makes sense. Like I, I yeah, because it yeah, especially when you look back as to why. They went down the road of doing this. Like you, you're, you're spot on with why this move makes perfect sense. And yeah, I would imagine though, they probably would continue with it if, you know, technology would allow them to do so. But it's just one of those things where like they were doing this without the developers actually having to patch the games themselves or really right. do anything. So the fact that um, they, they got this far without even having to get to that point, I think just is a testament to how um awesome the, the the ability was for them to add these frames to these games just without even having to mess with the game too much so do you um, wonder if it if it's like there's a forwards compatibility thing there too where they like bake something like this into games now so that like in five years from now like they're they can mm -hmm. they can live longer they can grow with the technology as that kind of happens i wonder because i feel like there just has to be more of a return on all of this investment that went into it you know what i mean like there has to be something you don't you don't just do it just for one thing i don't think yeah, like I would imagine that the, this will come into play down the line when we have, we get the Series XX or the Triple X, Sean. Triple X, nice. Yeah, yep. or uh, X Vin third, Diesel release. Vin exactly. Diesel will, will come out on stage. Yeah, <laughs> Next so to I would imagine. <laughs> <laughs> for my final, gosh, for, for, for um, oh my gosh, Fast and for Furious 30. Vision. Yeah, of course. So that'll mm -hmm. be on by then. So yeah, I would imagine <laughs> you're right. Like that's probably, <laughs> like it, th this technology, they, they could even license it out to other people. Or right, maybe right. implemented in other releases, like with Series X backwards compatibility on future systems. So, yeah, right. I would imagine it's it's there for a good reason, and, and especially like Microsoft first party games. Like I would imagine, like some of those are going to get performance boosts. Like maybe the, maybe most of them will run at 120 frames per second on the Series, you know, double X through the power of frame, totally like FPS boost or something like that. So, who knows what the future holds? But I thought it was interesting because like Super two really great power. Uh, uh, features for the console, whether it's backwards compatibility or FPS booth, both kind of like ceasing to exist around the same time for like wildly different reasons. Because again, backwards compatibility that is stopping because licensing. of like licensing, and then this yeah. is because of technology. So 
yeah, it, I think it's actually like super interesting to see. So. I, it clears the path, it clears the road for Halo to do its thing now, man, and for Forza yeah. to do its thing, and for these games for for Game Pass to do its thing. I think it it served its purpose, and I just I think the only thing that the last thing I'll say is like it. I don't know that it was clear from the start that this would have an end date. You know, and I don't know if they needed to say that. It's just maybe it comes as a surprise to some people. It, I think it does for me. Yeah, and I have actually two more things to say about this real quick. Number one, I had a thought that kind of came to my head after we were looking into this story, which was that Halo, of course, out next week. Now that we have Halo coming out, like with FPS boost shutting down, with backwards compatibility shutting down, and with Halo's release, like that's basically in a way, like the, the line in the sand to me is to the end of yes. Microsoft first party support That's what I'm saying. for Xbox yeah. One mm-hmm. and essentially just moving on from there because all the titles from here we know are all current gen exclusives. Redfall, yep. Fable, yep. Perfect Dark, like all those games are not coming to Xbox One. So yeah. mm-hmm. I, w- I would imagine like this is kind of part of the plan is to like cut off all the support of Xbox One beyond Halo Infinite. It's, and Halo Infinite in a way kind of feels like maybe it's going to probably end up being like the swan song for the Xbox One. Well, and they've already built, they've, they've started building the bridge with the cloud gaming as well, um, mm-hmm. that you can play on consoles now. Now I quick update on that. I played doom eternal, which I feel like is the ultimate test of cloud gaming. Not so good. I did yeah. not have a good time with it, unfortunately, but hopefully, and I have good internet. It's hardwired. I, I feel like there's nothing better I can do on that front. Um, curious to know if anybody else has different experiences, but yeah, to your point, Ryan, like the, the old consoles, they're done and there are, there's a lot of, of pathways for people to go from Xbox one into series X or series S. Um, maybe even they, somebody might've bought one on black Friday, Brian Turford. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Well, I, I am going to skip over our next story real quick to get it out of the way, out of the way, since you gave me such a nice segue there, John. Nice. Yeah. According yep. to the Adobe Digital Economy Index, which actually met, uh, was measuring uh, like search results as well as a whole bunch of other purchasing things from Black Friday, the Xbox Series S was the best selling hardware over Black Friday weekend. It was also one of the highest selling electronic devices during this time period, even outside of games. So including TVs, computers, like everything that was on sale that was electronic. The Series S was in the top three devices for devices for prices for for consoles. So we don't have an exact number or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I imagine we'll get well, Microsoft really doesn't talk about console numbers too much, but we might yeah. hear anecdotal numbers from NPD probably during next month's uh, report, um, like coming later this month in December. But yeah, it sounds really awesome. I know a lot of people out there, though, just jokingly saying, well, of course, because it's the only thing out there, Sean. But what do you think about that? Do you think it's, there's more to it than, than just what that comment? I think I want to even just disqualify that as a negative comment. People go, oh, it's only because of this. It's like, well, then kudos to microsoft for making it available like that's a an awesome strategy they they had huge foresight on a number of fronts one to have an option for uh, a lower price option to compete against playstation even um uh maybe even nintendo as well and that the yields uh for the chips that they would require would be better for that so availability would be uh would be elevated there as well so kudos to microsoft for just showing up for Black mm-hmm. Friday, it's obviously a big deal, and this whole yeah, it's the only, it's only outsold everything else because it was available. It's like, well, great, your perfect thing that exists, like you can't buy that, you might as well not even have it, you know. Right. So I I think yeah, huge kudos to Microsoft for that. Um, I also think that this there's a lot of things happening, Ryan. Mm-hmm. Halo is hitting; it's very very popular right now. Forza has 10 million players. There's a lot of people talking about. Game Pass and these games and Xbox and Call of Duty has a big giant mess around it. I think Battlefield has a whole bunch of like mess around it. Far Cry had its moment and Nintendo's going to do what Nintendo does. I think the the Switch sold quite well, especially in the UK. But I Mm -hmm. think there was like a like a parting of the seas for Microsoft to just kind of own it, you know, and they did and they showed up in a big way. Like what if they didn't have availability like, yeah. I think that that would be, that would be a serious problem. So they, they showed up, they had the games, they had the offers. Like, I think this is huge. Um, and a big moment, I think in, uh, in Xbox's history, as they continue to turn the ship and try to get back to maybe the glory days of the 360, my friend. Yeah. Especially with like, they also launched that Fortnite rocket league bundle, which again, sounds ridiculous. It does those sound are two ridiculous. free to play games, but 
that like bundle sold out very, very, very quickly. I noticed. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I yeah. actually saw a lot of people commenting online about, you know, them picking it up because Halo was coming out and they were excited right. for that. And, and they thought it was a great deal. So especially cause in the States, it's about the same t price as that, that switch bundle that also was live during black Friday, which was like the older switch model with Mario Kart live, like Mario Kart eight, like the same bundle they've had for, for years on black Friday for the mm -hmm. switch. So yeah, it's just, it, it's cool to see kind of, people jumping into Xbox for the first time and seeing lots of comments being like, yeah, I, I can't find a PS five anywhere. So I bought a series X or sorry. So I bought a series S or they, they, they there's either like switch owners or PS five owners that maybe are wanting to dip into the world of Xbox and they're out. Totally. It. Exactly. So yeah, I'm glad that it's out there. I mean, you can still actually go pick one up pretty reasonably as well. So if you are mm -hmm. out there and you want a series S, I mean, they're out there. So definitely go grab them. It's just so much harder to find the other ones that, I mean, this just is a slam dunk move in a lot of ways. So, and especially okay. in the early days of the console, I think the Series S is such a great, uh, a great option. I have a feeling if I'm just gonna, and we'll do our our annual predictions at the beginning of the year very soon, but I think like next year we're really gonna start to see the Series X start to separate itself, and and the PS5 mm -hmm. as well. But you know, in the early years here, it's such a good option, man. I've yeah. played Halo multiplayer on both uh, X and S, and it's it's rock solid, dude. Nice. All right, next up, um, John Junzik. I hope I got that correctly. He's the with the community manager over at, at 343 for Halo, has indicated on Twitter that the progression system for Halo Infinite's multiplayer has received a new update by the time that you're listening to this. Your first six games per day will have boosted XP counts starting at 300 XP for your very first game of the day and will scale down to your sixth game at 100 XP. And then from there, you'll get the, the 50 XP per match that you've been we've been getting for a while in, in Halo's multiplayer changes are coming apparently as well, but they will take a long time. According to John, he said he, and there's no roadmap as to when kind of bigger changes are going to happen or anything like that. Mm -hmm. My personal feeling on this, and I think you and I have talked about this before on the Yumi Capri podcast as well as I feel like this is the, the any big changes are probably going to happen around season two yeah. of, of Halo Infinite. I think that's, especially with this hot fix now, like I imagine like this is to kind of tide people over until then um, before they can kind of implement like maybe a bigger overhaul with kind of the, the XP and progression systems. But uh, yeah. what do you think about this news that, um, that we, you basically have boosted XP for your first six, game, six games? And do you think this is a good move? Do you think this helps? I think it is, and I think it, it it addresses. There's probably some data as well on like how many matches do people play. Like, is six <laughs> average, you know? And is that address like a huge portion of the community? I think it's just a funny thing overall. Like, it's I I really feel for the developers on this one. It's like you are one step closer towards like the the XP is meaningless, and I get like so much of it, and I have nowhere to progress to because I'm already completed my my season pass and all those things. Like, I that's such a hard thing to balance. Uh, especially when the commentary is coming from such a hardcore audience, the people who are playing the game the most and more likely to like get to the end. So you'll, you'll have them complaining <laughs> fairly, fairly soon, I think. But I think it just shows what, what we've seen from this team the entire time is that they are listening. And I think this was a really good way to give a quick win that shows that they're listening. But then also, as you mentioned, like the hinting at there's still, there's still more to come. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of hoping that that is enough for the Halo community to kind of trust the team that like to not cast judgments like and have the cement dry and harden immediately. Like I'm hoping that there will be an open mind towards the roadmap here and that this is truly a, a beta, you know, that is meant to be uh, built upon and that the game itself is is meant to be like an ongoing thing as well. Like this will be the ongoing game of the year next year mm -hmm. at Jeff Keighley's awards too. So yep. yeah, I think, I think there's still lots to go. I personally, like I was kind of okay with it already. I wasn't going to bitch moan and complain about it, but I understand where people are coming from on this. Yeah. Um, and the fact that this is the loudest thing that anybody is speaking about just says that the maps are awesome. The gameplay is great. Like there's, there's some other things about custom matches that we've chatted about, but mm -hmm. yeah, just, I'm good with it, man. I'm just glad they're communicating because that is that's so huge. Yeah, for sure. Well, I'm going to bring in Jedi Master Ren over on Discord, 
who asks, I've been dipping my toes into the new changes to Halo Infinite's battle pass progression that we just yeah. talked about, and it seems like it's a very noticeable and definitely welcome change. Oh, Breaking good. it down, playing six matches guarantees at least one level up per day. Are you guys happy with where this is right now with the progression, or do you think there's more fine-tuning that's required, which we just talked about at least a little bit? I'm pretty stoked with this revision. So, Sean, in your ideal world... Yeah. What do you, what, how would you imagine the kind of the battle pass like evolving? Do you want like the, the XP to feel like, like, obviously I think you just mentioned that you don't want the XP to flow too, too much or else it no. just feels meaningless. So yeah. what, what do you think the right balance is for something like this? So these right now you're getting XP for a participation trophy, right? Like you play the game, you get XP. And I think that like, and that's kind of why it's the first step, but you know, you get, you get a celebration, you get a badge or you get a little something, something whenever you do something cool in the game. And I think that's what call of duty got right, right from the start, right with like modern warfare was, you know, you got, you know, you're the MVP of the, of, of your team, or you did a triple kill. You did something awesome. Like there's a lot of things you can do with like your, your grapple hook. Like, I think you should get XP for stuff like that. I think when you're done, it should say, here's your like participation trophy. Here's your, like, you got all these double kills. You're the last kill of the match. Your first, First blood, like those types of things, I think should be rewarded with XP um, more than just a cool guy's voice going like first blood. Kind first of thing. blood. Yeah, I mean yeah. It, that makes a lot of sense, especially like because then that way you could you could actually just leave it at fifty XP per match as the participation trophy, and then give like totally five or ten XP for each little reward you get, or or even increase it more. Because I don't agree with the uh, the notion that a lot of people are saying online where they they would prefer it be like, oh well, the person who gets the most kills should get the most XP, and the person with the least no, amount of kills should, should get, get some. You should right. get a little something, something for that, but not the most XP. I think everybody can, I think that's, that is too elitist. And I think one of the ways, one of the reasons I'm liking Halo so much is because regardless of the mode, I feel like there mm. are different ways for me to contribute to whatever, if we're playing Team Slayer or whatever it is, like there's something that I can do that I can find fun in. If you just single it out and go, whoever's getting the most kills or whatever, like that primary objective is, then only like one person gets that. That's too exclusive. And, and this is about togetherness and community and making people feel welcome. So you want to reward all sorts of different moves and things that people do, or even like, even again, Call of Duty has this model down. Like when you, when you die a lot and then <laughs> you get your first kill after like four, four deaths, like you get XP for that. You get a little something, something like your, it's your comeback. It's your revenge. It's your never giving up kind of credit. I think that that's important too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and again, you like, I don't, it kind of reminds me of like, I don't know if you remember this, but when Destiny 1 came out, um, they used to get, when you would play PVP in Destiny 1, it would reward you with like a weapon or a piece of armor or something like that usually. Right. Um, but it would hand that out randomly to someone in your party, but not based on like who got the most kills and stuff like that. And people were upset online about how like, oh, I'm the MVP of the match and I didn't automatically get the item. Like we need to fix this. So it kind of reminds me of that same mentality where it's like, where the, the, the person with the best score is the one who should get all the rewards. And I yeah. don't think it should be like that. Cause the, to, to your point, Sean, I think there's more ways to contribute than, than just the highest number of kills. So, man, I mean, I, oh, I know everybody is hating on overwatch or blizzard these days, but overwatch did a nice job too of, um, like even just giving kudos to people like, yeah. sm like sportsman, like, or sportsmanship award or whatever, just a little pat on the back. I think that's really cool as well, where there's so much to this. There's so many different elements. And I, the, I, where I think that what they're talking about, that there's more to come has to speak to, yeah, there's more than just the participation trophies mm -hmm, for sure. And then we also got a question from Mark Carabin at the Canardian on Twitter who asked the question, do you think Halo's multiplayer progression snafu is excusable as beta growing mm. pains? Or do you think there is enough games as service games that they should be able to rip something off of that's proven to work? Or do they have no excuse for having things be as messy as they are? I mean, to, to kind of go back to what we were talking about before, and you had mentioned this as well, Sean, is the fact that this is the, the loudest yes. thing from the community just shows just how, how good the gameplay is for this game yep. and how I don't think, honestly, they'll get there with this stuff. And I don't, I, I think it's excusable because I think the gameplay is so good that it almost doesn't matter. It's all cosmetic anyways. It can't, doesn't help you in any game. Like you don't have a significant advantage over your opponent. If you were a different, you know, piece of armor or something like that. So as far as I'm concerned, I really don't care too much about it. And that comes from someone who bought the battle pass where I still Same. feel like I'm getting Same enough here. rewards that kind of justify it regardless of this. So I don't, yeah, th I don't I, think it's a big deal. 
I am completely with you. They clearly focused on the game itself first, the map design, the level design, the, yeah, how everything kind of comes together there. And this is, maybe it can come across as an afterthought. So as a paying person, maybe you might go, okay, no excuse for that. But dude, like the game is so solid. So yeah, yeah. I, I have a hard time really coming down on them for all of those reasons. Yeah, exactly. And, and plus like I'm not being bugged for like XP boosters and stuff like every two minutes in the game, right? Like, like a lot of other free to play games too. So yeah. And the I challenges the- are there. Like the challenge, like there, it's not like there's not a way to progress too. like, you kind of mm-hmm. have to pay attention. It has driven me from, instead of just like playing kind of blindly and going like, Oh, I'm just getting XP and getting my stuff. Like it has forced me to look at like, what are my daily challenges or what are my weekly challenges where, where it's actually more interesting. I would say, right. and going back and forth with the event that just happened last weekend as well, I think was really cool. Um, I don't know if we really talked about that. I got my I got my samurai stuff, Ryan Trevor. Same. Yep. Same. So so there. Um, so yeah, I think I think people just need to look at like kind of what's there. Um, I encourage people to do that to to look at what is there because I think the narrative right now is that it's entirely broken. And yep. I think that's far from the case as well. There's definitely something there that people can engage with and learn, and then they'll improve as we go along here. Yeah. For sure. All right. Last news story before we get to questions is, Sean, there's so many games coming to Game Pass. So yeah. buckle up. I'm going to go Dude, through them. one of them I'm so excited about. I am so pumped. But let's do it's, it. All right. So first up, the following games are out today by the time that you're listening to this on December 2nd. We got Anvil. It's all in caps. So maybe it's really angry. Archvale. <laughs> Final <laughs> Fantasy 13-2. Oh, Lawn I didn't Morris- see that one. Lawnmower okay. Simulator. Clearly, that's the oh, one Sean's excited go. about. Okay, no, I got three now. Okay, very cool. Okay. Uh, Rubber Bandits, Stardew Valley, and Warhammer oh, yes. 40k Battle Sector. Those are all available right now from the time that you're listening to this. What's and the then, Warhammer game? What is that? I don't know what that is. I haven't heard <laughs> it. I, there's too many you Warhammer games know. to come up with, Sean. That's true. That's true. Yeah. So beyond that, on December 7th, we get Space Warlord Organ Trading Simulator. <laughs> so you're trading people's <laughs> organs, I guess. And then on, on December 8th, Sean, there's this little game called Hail Infinite coming to Game Pass. Yes, I don't know of if course. Have heard of it. But mm-hmm. uh, that's out on the 8th. And then on December 9th, we're getting One Piece Pirate Warriors 4. And then on the 14th, we're getting Aliens Fireteam Elite. And that's the one. Among Us. Are all, all bow coming on the 14th. Oh, so man. that's all the games. They're, that's Xbox's Christmas present to us. Just more games on Game Pass. Lots of awesome choices here. Um, I will say to those who haven't played Final Fantasy 13 too, but maybe were turned off by Final Fantasy 13. That game is way better. And it actually oh, is looks, it? And it also looks really excellent with Xbox One enhancements in particular because Interesting. Um, that game was not a great looking game on Xbox 360 with a bunch of, you know, compressed video files and stuff like that. But right. that, that game is way better than than the first game and it plays way better than the original version. So wow. I would definitely recommend that one if you like can RPGs. Can I just jump into it? Can I, can I skip uh, 13, not two? I mean, the story is going to be nonsense anyways, regardless right. of whether you played 13 or not. So I'd be, I, you'd be fine. Sean. Okay. Okay. That's a, that's a glowing endorsement. I'll take it. Not, I mean, I just bought Xenoblade Chronicles two on switch and all these other damn things. And it's fine. You're never getting to those anyways. We already know. Oh my gosh. Back for blood is still on my list. Oh my gosh. We got this alien alien was the one that really jumped out to me. But as you were going through that list, I kind of found myself getting pretty hyped up more than I thought. Even Stardew Valley dude on all the things. That's a, that's a good pick. Nice. I know. And, and again, Haley, Aliens Fire Team Elite, I talked about it on the show before. It's kind of like Aliens version of Back for Blood. Yes. So if you like the Aliens That's movies and you like that. Back for Blood or Left for Dead, I think you're going to enjoy that one too. It's been, I need definitely a much more Ryan. fun with friends. But Yeah, let's play that together. That'd be fun. But, Sean, I also have to report the following Uh-oh. games are leaving Game Pass on oh, December no. 15th. And unfortunately, this is also a very good list too. Oh, you no. Know, <laughs> so, Beholder. The Dark Pictures Anthology is Man of Madon, yeah. Guacamole 2, Ooh. Wilmot's Warehouse, Unto the End, and Sean's favorite game of the generation, Ukulele and the Impossible Lair. Oh, All no. Leaving Game Pass on December 15th. So play them now or forever hold your peace. Or if you can rip yourself away from Halo for five minutes, go play ukulele. That game's awesome. Ukulele and guacamole, man. All those, the, the, everything that rhymes with that in that list, probably good. Uh, but yeah, guacamole is excellent as well. Yeah. You got 14 days. So it, it's definitely enough time to finish both those games between now and then. So <laughs> God, just quit there your jobs, you <laughs> leave your families, dedicate some time long, to some video John, games. Are you committed or not? 
You, you know, can be, you can beat guacamole too in an afternoon. It's fine. All right. Let's let some of our friends into the car with us. It is time for the carpool folks at home. If you'd like to be part of the carpool and have your question read on the show, there is a number of awesome ways to do that. Number one, follow us on Twitter at Yumi Capriz. We put up a question post every single Wednesday, uh, Tuesday afternoon, except for when I forget and put it up Wednesday. I morning. forgot. I'm sorry. It's not Sean's fault. It's my fault. And then you can also leave a question on YouTube. If you are watching the video version, we'll answer it on the show. Or you can join the Yumi Capri Discord. It's free to join. So j- the link's in the show notes. So check us out there. Just like Court Lawan did. Wait, 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 wait. Court- I'm interrupting. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Shout out to Ribo on the Discord. Ribo has set up this thing that like you type in exclamation point Halo and then your gamer tag and it will pull up some like really cool stats for you. And it is a riot over there in the discord. So if you haven't joined already, come join us, go check out your cool stats. And man, Ribo's got like a bunch of lines of code that power this ribble bot that he's got going on. Yeah. And I just wanted to put that out there as a public thank you to Ribo and people should reach out to him on Twitter at Ribo Flavins and in the, and in the, the discord as well. Thank you, Ribo. You're the best man. One, one nice young man that Ribo is. Yeah. I, sorry, he's got sorry a great name. Court. He's got a great oh, name man. as well. Yeah. yeah. Just saying. All right. So I, you're to sense a theme with these first few questions, Sean. This one is actually for you in particular. This comes to oh, us from hi. Court Lalonde. Hi, Court. As Court Lalonde, he asked the question, if McDonald's was closed on your drive, <laughs> what would the alternative be? Uh, <laughs> so the, the, there, this doesn't have to be a hypothetical. Last night I went to McDonald's to get a drink for my wife and mm-hmm. it was closed and I literally turned around home and I, there was no alternative. That was, what? Uh, uh, that was very sad. You did just, just go happen- to a Burger King or a Wendy's or something? No, no, no. And actually sometimes I've done it before where the McDonald's by my house is closed. So I will drive to another McDonald's and it will also be closed. So I've been burned a couple times before. Um, no, it, it's very specific specific to McDonald's. It has to be McDonald's. It's mm-hmm. not se- six minutes abs. It's seven minute abs, Ryan Turford. It's, um, of course. yeah, like it's a very special way that they prepare the diet Coke or the, the fountain pop in general or fountain soda. If you like, um, no, Wendy's will absolutely not do, um, A and W while I love their burgers and their onion rings has terrible paper straws that they give. Um, so we yeah, talk about McDonald's has paper straws. I just went there like a couple straws. days ago and they have paper straws. I don't have a, I, look, I don't have a problem with paper straws in general, but you got to give me a good paper straw. Uh, and also shout out to the video on YouTube right now. Today, McDonald's gave me a paper straw. I mean, a, a plastic straw. They gave me a plastic straw, man. I'm so jealous, Sean. But McDonald's paper straws are better than any other paper straws I've experienced so far. Of course. Well, Save sticking the oceans. With- Sticking with fast food, we got Delroy on Discord <laughs> oh who asked the question, what's one item at McDonald's or another fast food joint that was previously offered but removed that hit you the hardest? For me, oh. it's undoubtedly the Mexi Nuggets at Taco Bell. They were essentially seasoned tater tots but were somehow delicious to my high school tater, yes. tater buds. I cried into a pillow when I discovered that they weren't being served anymore. <laughs> so, so Sean, is there a fast food item that uh, that got removed that your sad is gone? There is, and there, it's the sadness is magnified by the nostalgia that is attached to this. Ryan Turford, you might remember this back in the '90s. McDonald's served pizza, of course, and I, I don't. I think that was just in, was that just in Canada? Or it was, was just that a Canada thing. It was just we had we had pizza and they did it like they they would spell it P I and then they would take the two M's for McDonald's and turn them kind of like diagonal on their side to almost like a like a cursive Z or Z yeah. if you like yeah it was um I was really sad to see that go man also at about the same time was like Clear Pepsi or Crystal Pepsi or whatever it was called yeah mm-hmm. shout out to that not a fast food thing but shout out to Crystal Pepsi makes sense. And uh, yeah, I remember McDonald's pizza. We, I remember we went with my grandparents once and we waited like 45 minutes for it. And <laughs> it was not great. That's it probably why great. it went away. Yeah. But uh, on my side, there isn't one that has completely disappeared that I, I'm sad about. But I will say there's one that's seasonal that I wish was there all year round. And that's the, the Wendy's uh, bacon mushroom melt is a, a burger to top all fast food burgers because it's got yeah. melted cheese, it's got You're mushrooms, right. mm-hmm. it's got it's got burger patties, and it's delicious. So good one, yeah. That that that's one that I wish like was around all the time. Whereas there there isn't really one like that's like that disappeared forever or anything like that. Like I'm not a McRib fan or anything like that. No, even though the McRib just came back, it didn't come back here in Canada. So what about know, the there, double down at KFC? Is that what it's called? Yeah. Like the the two chick fried chicken breasts. That's too extreme for someone like me. Sean. That's a lot. Yeah. I mean, seven minute abs. Try, Sean, I'm seven trying to my over here. minute abs. 
All right. Next up, <laughs> we got uh, Gary at GJ Doggy, who asked the question, which I actually kind of ties back to something we talked about earlier with Black Friday sales. Have you guys picked up any new games on sale that you normally wouldn't have picked up? I mean, Sean, that's like half your list right there, right? Pretty like much. As far as, yeah, games you would normally have never bought for yourself, but you bought just because it was sale on, on sale on Black Friday. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I'm I'm still waiting for Hot Wheels, man. I and I wanted digital. I know it was on sale physical, but I did. I I don't have any physical games on my on my Series X. It would have been Guardians would have been the first one. Mm-hmm. And had I also like if I would have kept that, I probably would have been more inclined to also have Hot Wheels. But yeah, I don't know. I'm I think I'm still kind of waiting for for this next sale. Still, mm-hmm. Ryan Turford. You yeah. could have bought it physically on Switch, Sean. Just like your other physical Switch games. I know. I was tempted to do that as well, but I think I want it to look good. <laughs> I think I, I think I want that game to, to look nice, nice and crisp. And also, yeah, I've got Mario Kart over there. So I don't know. God, you're such a snob. Switch would have been whereas, good. I know. I don't, there's not really any good reason for it. Whereas for me, again, I only bought two games. And the two games, I was like, I knew I was going to buy these when they went on sale anyways. Like, yeah. with, with uh, whether it's Cruising Blast or Monkey Ball. It's like, yeah, I could buy those at full price, you know, two months before Black Friday, or I could just wait till Black Friday when they'll be on sale. Yeah, inevitably. Yeah, Lego. Lego, I probably would have skipped over if it wasn't on sale. But it was like it was kind of like you, I can't afford not to buy it. You know what I mean? It's true. Otherwise, you know, it'll just go to waste there. It'll just rot. Exactly. Right. Next Digitally. up, we're bringing Court Lalonde at Court Lalonde back in, and he has another question that's not food related. He asks, "What is that game in your backlog that you will never oh, ever man. get to?" Sean, what's the game in your backlog you will never <sighs> ever play? I don't want to. I don't want to cast these things out just yet. But there are some that I will say are they're they're on trial. They're at risk, man. They are on the fringe. And Back for Blood, I think, is one of them, man. Mm-hmm. I want to play that game so badly, um, but I I just don't know. I think it also is dependent on other people playing with me. But where are you at, uh, my friend? I kind of want to scroll through through my list here a little bit if I can. Honestly. I'm in the same boat where I don't want to put any game on blast because ultimately yeah. I know who I am, Sean. I, <laughs> if there's a game in my backlog, I will get to it. That's just how it works. Because yeah. when you, when you have as, when you have free time, like I do from time to time, like I always find time for games. Again, I, I talked about this before on the show, but I play probably like my, my playtime is usually split between 50% retro games and 50% modern games. So yeah. I actually play a ton of games and, there are games on my backlog, like uh, especially in the PS1 and PS2 era and stuff like that. But I know I will get those ga- get to those games eventually, unless I you know drop dead tomorrow or something like that. So, well, yeah. hopefully not. Good God! I'm just saying, you that never was know. Dark, right? but yeah, that's what I mean. Though they will get played. So there isn't really a game in my collection that I know I won't get to at least at some point. And Guardians is at risk like, already, man. Guardians and Riders Republic, I would say, are kind of like I, I know I just got them, but man, like Halo is here, dude. Like those games are th- they're there. I think. Mm-hmm. All right, last question once again comes to us from Gary at G J Doggy, who asks, "What do you think about Game Pass Ultimate members getting Halo Infinite perks every month?" Now, here's the thing: I actually tried and went on the Xbox Series S earlier before the show started and I didn't see anything about this. So I didn't actually see any of these under the halo. Uh, under is he the pitching it like as an app? idea? Like, is it something that could happen that would that be a good idea? Is that kind of where the question is coming from? Maybe, maybe, I guess, I don't know. It's either that or it may have been something that they announced, but again, I couldn't find an announcement of this. So maybe it's an, if we ran Xbox moment, maybe, but either way, I think it'd be a cool idea. Don't get me wrong. I just, didn't really see anything about it or anything like that. I'm even like, if people, people are watching the video and seeing me kind of lean over, I'm like turning on my Xbox just to confirm like maybe something didn't go up <laughs> while, while we were talking about it. But uh, yeah, I didn't see anything about this. So I wanted to acknowledge that we got this question, but it's just a matter of, I haven't seen anything about this. So I don't really have much to say other than I think it's a cool idea. That's I it. think, I think take it. Yeah. From the angle of like, yes, uh, Halo is free to play, but like, you know, should you throw a little bone to people who, who have more, who show more support than that? You know, mm-hmm. and I think that the answer is yes, actually. I think they probably should give you a little something, something, because there's now like a different, there are different, there's a different group. There's the people who are like just coming in, they don't have Game Pass. And also, like, even just as an incentive to get Game Pass, 
There is right. like this game is free as as Fortnite as as it gets, and you can do your battle passes and things like that as a monetization model. But I think it would be smart for Xbox to give you a little little dingle dangle, little something something if you had uh, Game Pass as well. So that would encourage people to become a member of that. Like I think that is kind of a no-brainer to be honest with you um the only thing that i'm wondering about is how that would fly for people who aren't currently on game pass because of course this would benefit me greatly of course and you and everybody else probably listening as well does that feel gross to people who aren't on game pass uh or should you just be grateful that you get a great free game like mm-hmm. that you son of a well, gun well they do stuff like that with free-to-play games already anyways so like right that's why i don't really see it's a big deal plus again if, if right. any perks you get aren't going to be you know, messing with the gameplay. So at that point, totally. it's going to be all charismatic. So at that point, who cares, right? Or even what if you had like a double XP weekend for Game Pass people? Like, yeah, what if that, that, I could see that maybe irking people. I, th- I still think it'd be a great idea and people they should probably do it. But yeah, I can right. see that upsetting people. I know, just everybody just needs to calm down because that's a, that's a as, as Joe from PS Trophy Room would say, that's a banger of an idea, I think. It's true. He would say He would like absolutely that. say that. Mm-hmm. He loves Halo. And it, Anyway, Sean, we got to go. But before we go, Sean Pugs, go. I had so much fun talking to you today, Ryan Turford. People can find me on the internet on Twitch and Twitter at Sean Capri. It's Sean like Connery, Capri like the pants. And as for me, you can find me on Twitter at Ryan Turford. You also find us on Twitter at Yumi Capri's on YouTube at YouTube.com slash Yumi Capri and on podcast services around the globe. So for Sean Capri, I'm Ryan Turford. This has been episode 218 of the Xbox Drive. Wow. And we out. Bye. I can't believe we've already done 218 episodes. We're going to be doing so much stuff. We've got so many things coming to you guys. You don't even know what's coming to you. So stay tuned to the Xbox Drive. Bye. Started off and I ended off at the exact same way. Bye. Bye. The Xbox Drive is fueled by patrons at patreon.com slash Yumi Capri. And from the bottom of my heart, I am so grateful to the nearly 70 patrons who support us each and every month. With special thanks to our Capremium producers, Dallas Ford, Lee Navarro, the fearless leader of the Phoenix Overdrive Extra Life team, and Jonathan Brown, the man behind the music on the Xbox Drive and the Nintendo Drive. You can support Jonathan Brown at youtube.com slash GamingPurpleMonkey. Our platinum producers, Robbie Bobby Miller and Trucker Sloth, and all of our gold members, Argo, Benji Kong, Brendan Myers, Dallas Robbins, Dano, Emily O'Kelly, Foolish Fuji, Heather Boney, James Johnson, Dr. Doom, Joel Brooks, Jose Jimenez, Mac Time, Marcus O'Neill, Mr. and Mrs. Nasty Boots, RJ Kern, Skinny Matt, and Xavier Reyes. If you'd like to support this show, go to patreon.com slash Capri and choose the Patreon tier that works for you. 